Welcome to the Prep Pigskin Report Podcast, hosted by Papa Pig himself, Paul Rudy. Welcome to PPR Podcast number 41. Bert, can you believe we've done this 41 times now? I can, actually. I can. <laughs> it feels, feels and I like just it. realized that's my camera last week after the 40th one. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that's your camera right there? Yeah, I got uh, it. In the middle is our guest. Would you like to introduce him? Connor Underhill, which I said, unfortunately, on the morning show, I said Rancho Bernardo, but it's Rancho yeah, you left Buena le- Vista. Yeah. yeah, you left a letter I did. off. It's I did. I, did. I apologize. I didn't catch the mistake, yes. though. Hey, uh, Connor, thanks yeah. for doing this. Are we getting you out of school? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm actually in English class right now. Oh, you got to be loving us, huh? Yeah, and then I got math next, too, so maybe if it goes over it. Nice. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for doing this. Uh, let's just let's get kind of right started in. You were part of that... Freaky Friday, all the best quarterbacks yeah. gallery. Is that still going on? Did that? When did that happen? So I think this is the first time they did it this year. It's uh, Super 7. And we had two camps like the past two months, I'd say. They kind of separated them. And we had about 50 to 70 quarterbacks come out and compete. And they picked nine out of the 50 and 70. And so we had the Freak Show Friday this past week. And... We all competed, and they're going to pick seven out of those nine. And so, one, it's an honor to be one of the nine selected, right? Yeah, of course. And then uh, and then, were you part of this? Did you make it the cut down to the seven? So they haven't uh, told us yet who made it to the seven. Obviously, like, if you make it, that's great. If not, you're still the top nine, so it's amazing to even be invited back. And, and one last question, Bert. Uh, what, are, what, all, what are you being tested? I, I, I know it's football-related skills, but give us an idea of how that day goes. So basically what they've been doing is having us run through drills of uh, just throwing on air, throwing to your wide receiver, and seeing if you can make that pass multiple times, not just once. Like, see if you're accurate enough to make a slant five times, make it out five times. Just multiple times running through that to show you're an accurate quarterback and able to make these throws that most guys can't make. So, Connor, I was looking at your stats. Did you have 2,000 yards rushing last year? Uh, not me. So our running back had in total, our running backs had about 2000 to 2300 yards rushing. And then we didn't, we were more of a running last year. I think this year it's going to be a lot more evened out 50, 50. Yeah. And that was going to be my question. Cause you've come up as the most underrated quarterback in San Diego a few times on this show. And, and sometimes the most underrated player in San Diego coming up this year. Um, and I was going to ask you that you guys don't seem to, you don't have the opportunity to throw like a Dominic Nankill or Jax Leatherwood are saying. Um, do you see that changing this year? Yeah, this year we definitely have a lot more threats than we did last year at the wide receiver positions. So that's going to help. And our O-line has got, I mean, last year I think we were averaging about 180 pounds on the O-line. This year it's at 250. Oh, so right. our guys got a lot bigger during this offseason. And that's obviously going to help me get more time to throw. And then having those wide receivers that can go up and catch the ball is going to help too. So this year I think if we can prove to our offense coordinator if we can pass, he's got to definitely air it out. Playing off that underrated or unknown quality, does that have to do with geography a little bit? I mean, you're about as far north as you can get before uh, Fallbrook High School. You're you're up there and you're on the outer reaches of the, I don't know, I don't know how to say this, football world, or you're you know you're a little bit out there. Does that kind of uh, translate to lack of exposure? Um, I don't know. I think if you play well, you get exposed to That's all that really matters. It doesn't matter where you are, where you're located. Obviously, divisions play a part in it. Who you play plays a part in it. But as long as you ball out, you ball out. That's all that really matters, you know? And a lot now, it's, it's a lot of it's, you know, the 707. We're seeing all the traveling squads. Are you part of the 707 or just your school team? No, I, I'm not a part of the 707. I do it with my school. I'm not like a big... I mean, 7-on-7 is great, obviously. I think it's mainly for wide receivers and those defense players, but quarterbacks, you're not getting those gains that you usually get in a game or that pressure that you usually get. So if I'm going to do 7-on-7, seven seven, it's most likely my guys so I can get that timing down with them. Very good. Did you ask my usual question that I always ask? All right, Connor, I, I'm sure you you know if, if you've watched this podcast, you know the question that's coming, so I'll let Bert do his thing. All right. Connor, besides yourself, give me the top – your top three in order, quarterbacks in San Diego this coming year. Yeah, so I saw this coming, obviously. So <laughs> Everybody <laughs> sees it coming. That's all I ever ask. It's, it's about so, as obvious yeah, as a blitz. Huh? <laughs> so I'm going to say a couple guys that I've trained with because a lot of guys haven't mentioned some of you guys that haven't been mentioned that much. Uh, Connor and in Cherico, he goes to LCC. Mm-hmm. I've trained with him my whole life. And me and him, I've always competed because we're both the Connors. So whenever we're at camps, it's 
who's the better Connor? Who's who's this? Who's that? So we're always going to be competing and messing with each other. And he's definitely got a great season this year. I think we're having a party going on in the newsroom. Yeah, I will hold it. So that, that's one. But it, help, before I let you go on the first one, the kid from LCC, how is his last name pronounced? And in Jericho. So before I got on this, actually I had to text him like, hey, tell me how to say your name again. <laughs> you make sure I, say it right. oh, I can relate to that, Connor. Yeah, Believe he me. watched Paul. He, <laughs> never, he never butchers any names. Don't worry about that. All right, so yeah. that's one. You got two more You got two more picks. Who else? So the next one, uh, he's not really known yet. He goes to El Camino, Carson Howard. He's uh, He trains with Jose Moeller uh, at Left Coast Athletics. He's gonna. I think he's going to have a season that you guys will see. He's going to come out of nowhere and be a pretty good quarterback for their team, of course. Connor's prepared to. And then one more, one more. And then lastly, I I couldn't really find anyone else that hasn't been mentioned, so I decided I was going to do a younger guy, be a little bit different, do a guy that's going to be an upcoming in the next couple of years. So there's this kid that I've trained with since I was about eight years old. He used to go to Cree Morris, uh, Cash Herrera. He's going to go to Morris when he's going to be a freshman this year. I don't know if he's going to start on Marcy, but just remember that name. He's going to be. Say it again player. for me. Cash Herrera. So that's what I want to ask you, because you brought up Cree, you brought up Left Coast Athletics. I saw you went to Super 7. I saw you were in the Mikasi mm -hmm. Showcase, um, which I think is kind of cool, because, you know, a lot of those 7-on-7 seven seven teams, they tend to not share their kids. Do you ever get mm -hmm. a lot of flack from going from spot to spot? I think it's great, but you don't see it too often. They kind of claim the kids um, and don't let them go anywhere. No, I don't really get anything about that. I just go get, get my name out there, go to different people. It just helps a lot, you know, getting the name out there and trying new things. Well, yeah, I, I, as a kid who obviously you want to play at the next level and maybe even the next level beyond that, and you see all these kids, it's now become the thing on Twitter. I'd like to thank so-and-so for my last, you know, the uh, my for my second letter, sixth letter, 20th letter of, uh, of you know, uh, offer. offer, excuse me. Uh, when you're a kid who's who wants to do the same thing, does that make you, does that motivate you or does it depress you when you see everybody getting their offers? Uh, obviously, like, I just think about myself at the end of the day. Like, what am I doing? What am I doing to get better? I'm not going to compare myself to Julian. I'm not going to compare myself to Jax. Like, when I step on that field, it's about me. It's not about other people. Oh, that was a good ball? Okay, I'm going to one-up you, you know? It's just, it's just about me at the end of the day. Like, where am I going to go? How far do I want to go? I got to compete with myself, not other people. So let me, Paul and I are old, and this is one thing. I looked on your Twitter, and I saw you had your hand size, 9.5. When did that become a thing? Because I know it came a thing to all of us when Kenny Pickett came in, and they said he was like, you know, he had real small hands. But I never heard of that hand size thing being such a big deal to this year. Is that a big thing? Yeah, now? so so on the NFL, obviously, it started growing, becoming a big deal. And every time I shake someone's hand, everyone goes, damn, you got big hands. So like, all right. Obviously, it's a big deal. Kenny's getting problems with being, having small hands, so let me put my hand size on there so that I have huge hands. You know? <laughs> All right. I was just yeah, because if it means the difference between uh, this school and that school, you want to go with the big hand school, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, I, wait, I have one other question, because uh, you're another person, uh, Enigma, because I've never seen this in my entire life. You're the starting quarterback, and you're also in the wrestling team? Oh, no, that's, I think that's messed up on uh, Huddle. It's, it says I'm on the wrestling team. It does. The wrestling yeah. team actually tries to get me to come You want some matches too. <laughs> so. Yeah, the wrestling team at uh, our school tries to get me to come out there a lot because I've wrestled a lot of the wrestlers and I beat them actually a couple times and some of my linemen too. So, so you you have aptitude at it. You you, you could wrestle. Yeah, I wrestled in uh, fourth and fifth grade and then I've just had the double leg and I just use it on everyone whenever we're wrestling. You know, it's one move. <laughs> So, hey, let me ask you, do you have pictures of, uh, of yourself wrestling in fourth and fifth grade? Yeah, I might. I'd have to look way back. You Can know? you do me a favor? Can you look and, and, and get them to me before tomorrow? Because we edit some of this up. I would love to include pictures of you wrestling, talking about your aptitude. What, yeah. what, what other sports do you play besides, besides having a, an ability to wrestle? Uh, I used to play baseball, but when I was going into my freshman year, of uh, when I went to Rancho Bernardo, I... Decided to quit just to focus on football because it was messing up my arm motion a lot and it just messed with like that football aspect. So I decided to just focus on football. Well, speaking of which, you have a unique delivery. I don't, I don't, your throwing motion is, is unique. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. So ever since I started going to Left Coast, me, the main thing we focused on is changing my arm motion, making it shorter. So if you look about two years ago, it was way bigger, way bigger than it is now. So it's, it's been changing, getting smaller and smaller, smaller by the weeks. 
uh, just trying to work on that even more still, like till this day, the past few years, it's the main thing we've worked on. So do you plan on, um, you know, going into senior year, do you plan on taking any college trips or going to any college camps this summer? Yeah, I'm actually going to a couple. So I was supposed to go to Pennsylvania during the Freak Show Friday, but since I got invited back, I decided to stay here. And then I'm also going to go up to Montana and I think a couple others. What school were you going to go to in Pennsylvania? Uh, there was two D2s that I was talking to. Which one were they? I grew up in Pennsylvania. Uh, what's it called? I saw Muhlenberg. They're some complicated names. They're complicated names. It's yeah, I saw Muhlenberg. I saw you had an invite from Muhlenberg yeah, on your. Yeah. yeah, it was that one, and there was another one that I was talking to. So I think one was Junior Day visit, and then the other they were giving me an unofficial visit and just walk around, and talk to the coaches. Muhlenberg's nice to get a chance to go there and visit. Yeah, it is a pretty nice school. Yeah, it's it, is it a nice campus. campus. Yeah, beautiful campus. Nicer than Pitt. Pitt's in the city. Everything's nicer than Pitt. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there's any. So, Connor, uh, talk about uh, the adults in your life that have made a difference. Uh, you want, it can be coaches, it can be, uh, you know, what you're doing off season. It can be parents, adults. So, who are the people that have helped shape you? Uh, when I went to Cree, he definitely helped me. He changed my mental side of the game. Like, taught me, when you step on that field, you got to be the baddest guy out there. Whether it's quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, you're the baddest guy on that field. He's definitely made a big difference in my game when I was younger. Then I'd say my baseball coach that used to be my old baseball coach when I played baseball, he also helped me just a lot with motivation and the same thing, just knowing that like no matter what happens, stay calm and go out there and play. And then I'd also say my dad, obviously, he's always had my back um, since I've been young about playing football, my stepdad too. And then left coast, Jose Moeller, he's – changed me in multiple ways, taught me a totally different side of the game than what I thought it was. So what, that's interesting. Now I know you don't wrestle. That was fake on the, on the, on the profile. Yeah. So what do you do? What do you do in your, on the offseason spare time? You play Fortnite? What do you do? You got you got some hobbies? I'm, I mean, I'm not a really big video game guy. I used to be during quarantine. I think that's when I was gaming the most. But I lift. I hang out with friends, hang out with family. But I think the main thing is just I work out with left coast about three times a week during the off season. And then I lift about five to six times a week. Left coast is, is the one that doesn't get all, all the media attention. And yet I see them on social media, just go work and work and work. And they don't get the, the, you know, like the dream chasers and the Makasi, they, they seem to get the, yeah, I don't left coast doesn't have a seven on seven, right? They just train quarterbacks. No, he doesn't. Yeah. He just, he just does quarterbacks and coaches wide receivers when they come to train with his quarterbacks. He doesn't do any seven on seven stuff. He is coaching at LCC now, though. So what? What like like? Let's let's go through that a little bit. What are what's Jose teaching you as far as like footwork? What's the what's the one? I I would call it a swing thought in golf. It's always that one thought before you bring the club back. What's what's your swing thought as you're taking uh, getting under center or getting into uh, you know whatever formation you're getting into? So I think the one thing that he's helped me a lot with is he goes through one thing at a time. So. For one whole month, we'll work on just my arm motion. For one whole month, we'll work on my feet. Like, he doesn't give you multiple things and you're thinking, oh, my feet, my arm, my, what am I doing with my head when I throw? It's, well, it just focus on one thing, let's fix that, and then we'll move to the next. So I think that's one thing he's helped a lot with a lot of quarterbacks around the county. So is that hard for you? Because, you know, in training, I mean, you if you train three times a week, you're working on, you're thinking one day it's just footwork, footwork, footwork. Does that ever enter your mind, like, when you actually get in the game? Is it all of a sudden you're distracted by you're looking at your footwork, or is it just all become a natural flow? Uh, I think the main thing that's helping with uh, just during a game is just throw. Just play ball. Just be yourself, you know? Uh, if you're focused on your arm motion during a game, you're not going to throw off. I always tell uh, Jose, my left coast, that um, whenever we throw, like, together in a one-on-one -on -one session, that's when I throw the worst because I'm so focused on – Yeah my motions or everything else that's when you do the worst but he likes that it's like that because then you realize what you need to work on but then when it's time to play just play you know that that would be a well they'd be a good guest for this you would we should have more maybe that's who we have on next week but then everybody else can yeah. come on well i mean so what's wrong with that we take take a little break from the kids um i got a question hold on sure because this is my other favorite question okay. so go down memory lane no future lane when you're same age as paul and i what are you going to be doing Huh. Uh, well, the dream is to go to the NFL. I think after that, I'd want to coach probably. 
You're supposed to say you want to take over for Paul. Every every person we've asked said they want to take over for Paul on PPR, except you. I would and say I'll take over for Paul. All yeah. right, there you go. Connor, dream bigger. You <laughs> have to you dream bigger than that because just trust me. Uh, Connor, my, I, what's it like walking around on that campus? I assume everybody knows you. Uh, what's the phrase? Big man on campus? What's it like being? BMOC. What is it like being BMOC, or do you walk around with your head down and kind of stay out of the limelight? I mean, I kind of just mind my business. I do my own thing, but, but you'll be walking through the halls, and we have a lot of security guards at our school, so they're driving around with the golf carts, and you'll hear, QB1, QB1. <laughs> and then I, like, throw the hand up, say hi, see some friends. I just do my own thing. I'm in the office right now, so obviously I have a good relationship with them. They're all great people up here. It's pretty cool. Oh, we got you out of class. and they, I mean, some schools wouldn't yeah. let that happen, so yeah. I mean... You're a good interview. You should actually look into media. Yeah. You're, you're a really good interview. You're, you're, you really are. So uh, tell us about the Longhorn season. How, how good are you guys going to be? Uh, this upcoming year? Yeah. Well, you know, of course. <laughs> um, this year, I mean, we're going for it all this year. Last year was kind of, let's get some wins on our belt. Let's get our confidence back because the past couple years were bad. We got that confidence now. We got that swagger back to us. And we been just working hard. I think this year's the year we can get a ring for sure. You got one game on the schedule that everybody looks at and they're like waiting for that game? Uh, I think we're trying to get back out Mount Carmel and Ramona, that's for sure. That's our hardest our hardest game of the season and who wouldn't want the hardest games? I thought you were going to say the Battle of the Ranch. Uh, this uh, RBB, obviously, we're going to want that too. I mean, I want every game. I'm going to go one game at a time. Beat Castle Park, beat the next, and so on. See, see how it goes, you know? When I came to town some 24 years ago, that Battle of the Ranch was a real big deal that, man, it was eerie to be in the stands because it was really, it was, you know, it was Bears Packers. It was really aggressive. It seems like that's gotten watered down a little bit over the years. It, or, am I, or am I misinterpreting what's going on as far as it re relates to your rivalry? It's definitely just as big. It's, it's always been big. Right when I got here, Everyone has no pity for the kitty shirts on. <laughs> we're getting we're getting messages from Vista about how we're gonna lose. Thumbs down, horns. They do the horns down towards us. There's there's a lot of like rivalry. It's fun, but a lot of the kids I think on my team. Obviously, I didn't go to Vista when I was up here, but on my team we played with those Vista guys. So they're they have a lot of friendships. But once it's on the field, like we're not friends. It's once the game's over, we can be friends again. That's what we miss. We never got messages from opposing teams. It'd be like yeah, smoke yeah, signals yeah. or somebody left you a message on the well, voicemail. I would say that would be one of the top ten rivalry games in the county, don't you think? I mean, yeah, or at least yeah. it certainly was when I got here. It was in the top five when I got here. Uh, Connor, I, I, we're, we're, we don't, we're trying to keep these things under 20 minutes. We got way over. Yeah, I know. Well, we got, just stick around for a couple more questions. Um, what, I had one I wanted to ask. I want to oh, ask you. I know. Oh, I want to ask what are you talking about Bears-Packers? That's not a rival. You mean like the Eagles-Cowboys? Well, yeah, it's a game that regardless of the records, that people... If this was 1950, maybe. <laughs> but okay. Sorry, Connor. Sometimes I have, Connor, to, I have to put him back in his place sometimes. Connor, I apologize. He yeah. always <laughs> wants to argue in front of the children, and I try not to let that happen. But here's my question to you, Connor. I know there are a lot of great quarterbacks, and I know maybe you're not... Or you're, you're certainly on the Silver Pigskin watch list. And we've had a we've had one finalist from your school, and what would it mean to you to be the second finalist for the most prestigious award in all of high school football? I mean, I don't even know if I have the words for it. That would mean a lot. It, obviously, at the end of the day, I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about my team winning, and if it comes, it comes. If I ball out and it comes, that's that's amazing. There's nothing else I can really say. All I can say is, it's you know, like there's some schools out there, oh, it's never happened, so it'll never will be happened. But you had that running back that put up those monster numbers. If you have a season like that, there's you'll get back on. I mean, you just have to have yeah. that monster season. And uh, a break here, break there, you could be you could be at the uh, Rock Church on that whatever night that is, November 30th or 29th. This is a tough year this year, too. Well, it's going to be a tough year because there are so m we We could just go quarterbacks and, and not – have enough yeah. slots right tough year this year yeah we'll see i mean there may be a breakout guy that comes out of nowhere that had a great off season and ends up having a great season like my running backs or maybe some of our wide receivers or other schools too so that's ways ahead we'll see what happens with that 
Yeah, and it's, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because we talked about it, or I've said it a few times, I think our junior class last year was better than the senior class. I mean, you could almost take another class from word and put it on the, I know. On the podium. I know. And it's going to be, that's what our kids coming out, you know, the woodwork. I agree. So, uh, Connor, as we wrap this up, describe yourself. If, if, if you are sitting down, or here, let me take a question from Quasi Menza, the uh, Vikings' new general manager. He says every, they would have the top 30 candidates come into, uh, into the facility prior to the draft. Mm -hmm. And one of his first questions was, what is the song? the song that best describes you and your attitude. What is that song that is in your mental playlist that trips your trigger, that best describes you as an athlete? I see why the Vikings haven't been in the Super Bowl in, in 40 years. Yeah. Goodness gracious. <laughs> oh, just row, row your boat or something. Yeah. I mean, is, is there, what, what's on your playlist? You definitely put me on the spot, so I gotta think about this. One. Maybe an Eminem song, like, uh, Lose yourself. Where it's like about mom's spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, lose yourself. Like, See, yeah, lose yourself. I think that, that one might be a good one. See, before games, I put that on. That gets me a little hyped. You know what's really There's sad? You know what's really sad? When a 55 year old man got to tell you an Eminem song, a name, and you don't know. <laughs> That's sad. That is pretty sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, Connor, I, I'm impressed that you answered the question because I, I heard that. I was watching this thing on YouTube, and I was, I was hearing the GM for the Vikings say, "Yeah, I always ask this." this uh, question and I, I went the next 30 minutes walking I couldn't come up with the song I wanted to have some you know you journey know, don't stop believing <laughs> right. you could be that one yeah. Abba Abba yeah, Fernando those, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right Connor we've, we've kept you for yeah. the allotted 20 minutes we appreciate you doing this thank you for being on time thank you for being the young athlete you are and kudos to all the athletes in your life and Connor just send this word out to everybody in your in your circle Bert and I are wearing apparel from the PPR Pro Shop. Just go to the PrepPigsReport.com website, wow. and you too could have one of these cool items. There's many items, and I certainly appreciate it. Young man, you've been a hoot to talk to, yeah. and uh, um, I'm yeah, sure we will speak again, if, uh, hopefully face-to-face -face as we cover the Battle of the Ranch, okay? Yeah, hopefully soon. Thank you. I appreciate it.